Hey, this is Step Ahmet. Welcome to my exorcism.io series. In this video, I'll be working through the all your base exercise from the exorcism.io Ruby track. Um, okay, so let's see. For this exercise, what we need to do is convert a number from uh, one given base to another given base. And it's gonna be, this will be a general base conversion. Given a number in base A, represent it as a sequence of digits, convert it to base B. Uh, okay, and so this looks like a pretty good hint here about part of what we're going to have to do. This positional notation, which shows that a number in base B can be understood as a linear combination of powers of B. So for instance, 42. Uh, if, we, if we look at this as sort of a, a backwards indexed array with two, this being in the, in the first position, so an index of zero, and the four being in the second place or with an index of one, you can write it like this. Four times 10 to the first power plus two times 10 to the zeroth power. So likewise, if we have this number in base two, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, uh, that means, so, so start at zero, one, two, three, four, five, one times two to the fifth plus zero times two to the fourth, plus one times two to the third, plus zero times two to the second, plus one times two to the first, plus zero times two to the second. Uh, that's another way of representing this number. And, and as same, same here, same example for base three. And what's interesting about this is this will give us this number. The result of this will be this number in base 10. Um, and so I think what we're gonna do is use this to get from whatever initial base, whatever number we've been given and whatever base we've been given to get a base 10 number that we can then uh, convert back uh, into these digits. So, okay, this, this is an interesting one. Go ahead and grab this and pull the exercise down I'll start a new TMX session. Copy in my rake file that allows me to run my tests with my uh, with the with the mapping I've got set up in Vim. Uh, remove this empty file here, and I'll just open up the tests and see see what it says. All right, we have a uh, a, a class. Uh, Sorry, a file all all underscore your underscore base dot rb that will contain our class base converter. And base converter has a convert class level method that takes an input base as an integer, uh, a set of digits as an array, and an output base as an integer, and it returns uh, an array. Of, of the digits in the new base. Uh, so here, input base two, output base 10. And if we input one, we should get back one. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and open my test running pane. And uh, the this will fail because I deleted the file. So I need to create, let's go ahead and create that. and swap my panes here. Now um, I need to initialize the class base converter. Wait, what? Yes. Next up, uh, I need to uh, create the, define the class level method convert. Undefined method convert. And now it's going to complain about the arity of this method because I have not uh, see wrong number of arguments given three expected zero. Uh, so I need to I need to accept three arguments here. Uh, I'm gonna, it's going to be input base, digits and output base. And now I'm returning nil 
but we need to return uh, an array with a, with a one in it. Oops. Sorry, I keep fighting my uh, my new keyboard. I mean, I've had I built this keyboard at the end, uh, I don't know three or four months ago. Sometimes I still fight with it. My fingers don't don't know what my what my new mappings are uh, for things. Uh, okay, let's see. So so that's fine. Uh, the hard code hard coded result is okay to get started with because we're gonna have tests that make sure we really implement uh, the functionality that we need. Um, and I, I like to be that pedantic about my TDD because, it, you know, in the wild, sometimes a case is that simple. It's like we know that this is the only case right now. We don't know of any other cases or if there really will be any other cases. So just return the hard coded result that you know today. And when we have a case to implement, we'll implement it. Um, so, OK, test number two here, test binary to single decimal. Um, so. We have a binary case here coming in. Of course, this is going to fail because we're returning an array with a one in it and it's expecting a five. Um, but, but this time we have three digits coming in. Yeah, and so we're not returning, not returning five, we're returning one zero one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, and do do the work here. And so if you remember looking at this positional notation here, um, th so this is actually we're in base two and we have three digits. Um, so it's basically we need to do this. Uh, we need to take each digit we've been given, multiply it by um, the digit in that place to, the, uh, or, sorry, the digit in that place times two because that's our base to the power of whatever index we're in, we're looking at, plus each each of the other digits. Okay, so we need we need to do this, but we're gonna need to work, I think it'll be easiest to work from right to left. Um, and we're gonna reduce this whole thing, our array of digits to a single value that is the, the sum of these things. It's the sum of these values. So let me, let me, let me think about this. I've got digits as an array. And I want to work in the opposite order from right to left. So I'm going to reverse it. And I want to, if I do each with index, because I need to know the index, that's actually going to give me an enumeration of this that I can then reduce. I'm going to seed my reduce with zero. And then let's see, I get first my accumulator. And then I'm going to get the the this, the digit with the index here as the second argument. I'm going to just call it digit with index. And then I'm going to extract those. Um, why didn't that work? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Something, something's a little bit messed up. That's okay. I'll deal with it um, when I get to the test. But what I want to do is I want to extract the digit and the index from digit with index. And so what I want to return is the accumulator plus, uh, looking back at this, the digit that I have times the base to the power of uh, whatever my index is. So digit times the input base to the power of whatever index I've got. That's what I want to return. And that so that will be that will be accumulated the next time through and I'll get the next digit next thing there. And so this is going to give me uh, a single. So this I think this will give me the right number, but it's not going to give it to me as an array. It's going to give it to me as uh, as as an integer. So these tests should both fail because 
I, the numbers should be right, but okay. No, 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 no. See, I knew something was, I knew something was messed up here. Unexpected end. What did I do? Digits dot reverse dot each with index dot reduce. Do end. What have I done here? Oh, I see. It already it did it did it just put it over here, um, when I expected it to be here. That's that's a little weird. Um, okay, and so if you look at these failures, which man, what what happened to my colors? Something's messed up with uh, I don't know. Anyway, if you look at look at both these failures, you see I'm returning the wrong number, but it needs to be an array. And so I'm going to just for now, go ahead and just force this to an array. Okay, cool. Um, so be this, this is only working right now because output base is 10. Um, we're going to have to do a secondary conversion uh, in a second, actually right now. <laughs> Test single decimal to binary. So this will fail uh, because we've been, we've started at base 10 and we have to go to binary. So um, we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to return this five. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we're returning this five, but we actually need to now convert it to the output base. Uh, th this is working now because it happens to be base 10. So let me um, just call this base 10. It's the base 10 value. Base 10 value here. And then we need to take the base 10 value and we need to, we need to basically do the opposite of this. We need to split it into um, in, into the individual digits. Um, and so I, I don't really know a clean way to do this um, other than to create an, an empty array that we can start putting values in. Um, so what we're going to do is start start pulling bits of base 10 out for each digit. Um, and here, let me let me just let me just start doing this. So while we have something while while base 10 is greater than or equal to output base. Um, I think is what I need to do. Um, yeah, and if I do it that way, okay, so what's going to happen is base 10, I need to do a div mod because I need a remainder. All right, let's look at this. Let's think about this. So I have been given five in decimal that I have converted to the number five. This is what I have now. Um, and I need to convert that into, that needs to be under the digits one, sorry, one, zero, one. And my base is two. And so if I um, do, a, uh, let's see. So div mod is going to give me two values. If I div mod, let's see. <laughs> I have to think about this here. I'm getting confused. It's my my uh, my base ten value div mod my output base which is two. 
So I'm going to divide five by two and div mod is going to give me the, the, the result of the division and the le the remainder. It's going to give me the, the result and the remainder. And so is this right? Am I doing this right? Five div mod two. So yes, so this is gonna give me a two and a remainder of one. This is what I'm gonna have for these values. So this, this one right here is this one here because it's the remainder. That's what I wanna know is what's the remainder. And then I'm going to do it again. So now I've got two. And so two div mod two is, uh, the, the, is going to be one zero. And so in, in this, at this case, I'm going to, I'm going to put this zero here and because one is less than the output base of two, I'm gonna fall out the bottom. And so what I'm gonna to have to do here is add whatever's left of base 10. So, so taking this here, th this is gonna be the new value for base 10. And then this is going to be my digit, right? Is that what I wanna call it, digit? It's going to be base 10 dot div mod output base. And then result, I'm going to shove digit into it. And then at the end, I have to return result dot reverse because they're in reverse order. Let's see, does this work? Yes. Okay, this works. Cool. Yeah, so the remainder of each operation is the digit for that place, but they're in reverse order, and so I need to reverse them again. So I reverse it up here to extract them. I reverse it again when I'm done. Uh, all right, so let's see. Test binary to multiple decibel, decimal. Okay, so we have more than one digit. Uh, I think that is gonna work. Why didn't that work? Input base two, output base 10. Three, one, five, three. Hmm. Why doesn't this work? Let's just take a look. Uh, I'm going to skip these because I only want to see this particular test that's failing. Is that it? Yeah. Why is, why is Pry not working? Oh, you have to save it. Got to save the file. Imagine that. All right, so digits we were given one zero one zero wait one zero one zero one zero which our base ten number should be oh wait what it thinks our base number is forty two. 
So digits.reverse each with index. Reduce. Oh, I got a bug. This is input base, not index. How is that working? How are these other tests passing? Just uh, by happenstance. This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that those were passing. <laughs> but this is the way, this is the way of the job. This is the software career. It's, uh, you, you, you know, you, something's not working. You don't know why you look at the bug that you, you finally figure it, you see it. And then you're not sure how anything ever worked. How did any of these examples ever work? I have no idea how they worked. I'm sure when I'm editing this, I'll see something and I'll, I'll know. Oh, okay. That's what, that's why it worked before. Um, you know, I'm sure you see it. You probably see whatever I did, but, um, all right, cool. Let's keep going. Test decimal to binary. I think these cases are going to work now, now that I fixed that. I think this is all going to work. Trinary to hexadecimal. We, we've got a general base converter going through going through decimal um, base ten. Whoops. We don't really care where we're going from or to hexadecimal to trinary. That's that's fine. Um, 15 bit integer. Uh, empty list. This is interesting. Um, and we should get zero. Is that what will happen? Yep. Okay. Single zero should give us a single zero from any base to any base. Uh, multiple zeros will give us a single zero from any base to any base. Leading zeros. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Because we're just doing that conversion to decimal uh, according, again, according to this using positional notation here. Um, and so a zero at the beginning, yeah, we don't care. We're, we're at, we're just... You know, it's going to be zero plus whatever. And so we're, we're getting to our base 10 number in the middle. Just fine. Test input base is one. Ah, okay. This is our next failure because we're not raising an argument error in any case. So we don't raise an argument error here. No, nothing is raised. Um, so what I want to do is um, raise argument error if um, input base is one. Yep, all right. Input base is zero. Okay, so this will fail because I'm explicitly checking for one. And I see that the next test is uh, input base is negative. Let me, let me go ahead and do both of these together, which is, you know, that's about as, about as liberal as I get with my TDD <laughs> at less than, how about less than two? Uh, okay. Negative digit, uh, will also give an argument error and we're not checking our digits. So let's see, we have to validate our digits as well. Um, we wanna raise an argument error 
if digits.min is less than zero. Um, all right, typo. We have to have some digits before we can check uh, digits.min, before digits.min will be, <laughs> will be uh, actually anything but nil. Uh, all right, 227, test invalid. What's an invalid positive digit? What does that mean? Oh, input base is two, but we have a digit that is not okay so I can test that the same you know I guess the op opposite of this if digits dot any and digits dot max uh, is greater than or equal to input base and that right yeah because we had a two and our, our input base is two so our, our our digits have to fall within our input base range what else output base is one let's see are they gonna are they giving us the same Oh, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to run forever. It's going to run forever. Um, so we actually need to catch that. Um, are they going to do the same thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Output base is zero. and negative. So I'll test all three of these at once, but uh, if both bases are negative, let me just save all of those. And then I need to do the, I'm just gonna add it here for now, or output base less than two. There we go. So that'll handle either of those cases. Cool. Um, so let, let's refactor this a bit. Um, I think there's enough going on here that what I want to do is I want to convert this method into a class level convenience method that initializes an instance of a base converter and calls the convert method on the base converter. So what that looks like, uh, we write the code that we wish we had and it looks like this. Um, new with input base, digits and output base, dot convert. Um, I'll go ahead and end and, and then this is going to be Convert. I'm just taking the contents here that we're already uh, we were already dealing with, and I get rid of that extra end. And this is not going to work yet, right? Because I don't have an initialize method that takes these arguments yet. Um, but I can I can do that now, and then I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to change something here because I'm modifying base ten. Uh, all right, let's just one, one thing at a time. So I'm going to create adder readers for input base, digits, and output base. Define my initialize method 
to take those three arguments. and then set the instance variables with the same names to those values. Uh, okay. And so, yeah, this is going to, this is going to fail because still, um, because wait, 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 no, it's not, this is going to work. This is going to work for a moment longer. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. expecting end on line 39. Where am I missing an end? Oh. Typo. Uh, Typo. All right. So why didn't you tell me that? 90% of pair programming is correcting the typos of your uh, your pair. Calling them out. Um, all right. So so the next thing, let's see. There, there's some... Um, easy things here. Um, Let's call this um, min base. So this is this is you know a bare number in here is called a magic number is the code smell, and what we normally do with those is extract those to constants. And we got the same thing here. And we can do the same thing here. Min digit. Uh, the other thing that I would do um, is I would I would move this to the initialize method that we want to raise argument errors. We want to do validation on um, on object initialization um, because what we're what we're doing is we're checking these arguments right. And we're saying, hey, you are not creating the, 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 the parameters that you pass me do not create a valid um, base converter object. You gave me bad input. And so I can't create one of these. Instead, I'm going to raise an argument error. Um, and so what I... What I would do with this next, though, is I this is too much knowledge for the initialize method to have. You know, it's setting these things and but but now it has to know all these details about what constitutes a valid initialize method. And, you know, you can make an argument that's fair for for initialize. But I like to separate um, I like to segregate segregate bits of knowledge as much as I can to make them easier uh, to reason about just just what's in scope right here. So what I would do is just call this validate. And um, I would call that with uh, with a bang here at the end, even though um, some um, a linter will complain about this because this implies that you have a, a safe version of this method. That is the unsafe version. Um, but for this, you know, and so what would you do with it, with a safe version? Well, instead of raising an argument error, I, I would, um, you know, I would, I would have maybe errors here. I would define errors and I would, um, accumulate those errors based on this validation. And then, you know, so, so, so a calling code could, 
uh, initialize it and then check the errors or ask, hey, is this valid? No, okay, give me the errors, something like that, instead of raising an, raising, um, an argument error. But since we are raising an argument error, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and call it this way. And I'm gonna make this a private method. And I'm gonna go so far as to, um, let's see. So we're doing a couple of things here. We're validating our bases and we're validating our digits. And so let's call them that, let's just do that. Uh, okay. The, the other thing that I notice is happening here is that if you notice in both of these cases, I'm checking that I have digits and, and then that something is true about, about my digits, that the minimum digit is less than the min digit and the maximum digit is a lot is greater than or equal to the input base. So real, real quick, I'm going to put all these together here. Whoops. And then, all right, did that not work? It, it doesn't know how to apply these. Um, no, no, no. If raise argument error, oh, I see. This should be or. That we're going to uh, raise an argument error if we have digits and any of those digits are less than the minimum digit or greater than the input base or equal to the input base, greater than or equal to. Um, and so what we're really doing here is 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 we're checking that the digits are all in valid range. Are there any out of range digits? Yeah. Okay, so what else? What else can we do here? Um, well, let's see. Here I'm getting base 10 and then I'm producing the result. Uh, so, so when I set a local variable here like this, Usually that makes me think, okay, I want to extract that to a method of the same name. But I think I'm going to run into a problem here. But I'll just show you what I mean. So this I would create now as a private method. Base 10. And the reason why this is going to give me a problem is I'm, I'm setting base 10 here, which is no longer a variable. It's a method name. So this is going to cause an error. This will cause an error. Undefined method div mod for nil class, right? See, it's, wait a second. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why that became a, a div mod, but yeah, it's, it screwed it up by doing that. Um, so let's see. What I'm gonna do is have base 10 return an instance method that I will set the first time to this. So you see the first time I call it, it will not have been set and I'm going to set it to digits reverse and I'm going to calculate, I'm going to calculate the base 10 value of it. 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to reset that instance variable to the, the um, division portion of the div mod. And then base 10 from then on will return the new value. So I think that's enough to make that work. Yep. Uh, okay, let's see. Anything else I want to do here? So let's see, convert initializes and calls convert. What does convert do? Well, it initializes an empty array for, for the result. It, um, while base 10 is greater than or equal to the output base, the base 10 value of the number, then it's gonna do a div mod. It's gonna divide it by the output base and stick the remainder into that next digit. And it's gonna keep doing that until what we have is the next, the final remainder, and then that will be the final digit. And then we've got to reverse that whole thing. So really this is the largest, the largest place. And we return it. Uh, okay, and then base 10 uses that, um, that positional notation magic here um, to take whatever the number, the digits we've been given in whatever the input base is and convert that to a decimal number, uh, a base 10 number. And then the other thing we do is when we initialize here, we validate and we validate that we have, we validate our bases um, that input base is less than the minimum base and the output base that they're both both uh, less than oh no no we raise an argument error if either base is less than the min base and then we validate the digits which means um, that if there are any digits that there are no out of range digits and what's an out of range digit well the minimum digit is less than the min digit and the max digit is greater than or equal to the input base. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, uh, let me know if there, if you see something else that would make this clear. Um, this, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and submit it. Cool, thanks for uh, sticking through the video this long, watching to the end. Um, if you got value out of this, please go ahead and click the like button below. It really helps uh, with the YouTube algorithm to uh, make these videos more visible to, uh, to other people. Uh, leave a comment, that helps as well. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see more. And if you would like to learn a methodology, a workflow for refactoring so that you can write code today that you won't hate in six months, become a hero to your team and have massive value to your company, then you need to check out my tactical refactoring course uh, linked to in the description below or at this address. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.